with us through a strange yet familiar world. We'll see peoples of many lands, the places they live, the things they do, all a part of the world we live in. Imagine a country 100 miles wide and 2,600 miles long. It would extend from San Francisco to New York. Or along the Pacific coast, it would stretch from Alaska to the middle of Lower California. The top part, like the Aleutians, would be cold, foggy, with heavy rainfall, over 200 inches a year. Central Park, like much of California, would be warm, lush, and fertile, with moderate rainfall. The lower part, drier even than lower California, would be a desert. In South America, where weather conditions are reversed, this imaginary land turned upside down becomes the country of Chile. The northern third of Chile hemmed in between the coastal ranges and the Andes, contains the Atacama Desert, one of the world's driest and most barren regions. For years on end, no rain whatever falls on much of this rolling plateau. Through countless miles of desolate country, no plants grow not even cactus. Most of the Atacama is a sterile wasteland without birds, animals, or even insects. Now a small patch of green appears in the desert. It is an oasis. From the snow of the high Andes flows the tiny lower river, bringing life to a few hundred yards of land on each side of the stream. This oasis of Choo Choo was once a resting place on the great Inca Road South. Long ago, the llamas were the Indians' only domesticated animals, but the Spaniards brought sheep, which managed to live on the scanty fodder. Even the trees are artificially planted in the Indian village of Choo Choo. Areta, a dried fungus from the mountain slopes, is their common fuel. A woman of Indian ancestry uses it to roast mutton. Her ancestors probably lived here in Lasana, an ancient Indian fortress, in ruins today on the River Loa. Almagro and Pedro Valdivia Spanish explorers may have stopped here. Before the white man came, the Indians worked desert mines, silver and copper, which Spanish fortune seekers later found and developed. The primitive mining methods the Spaniards introduced four centuries ago are still used in many sections of the desert. Even today, the prospector has a lonely life. But occasionally, as at the desert town of Andacoya, it is enlivened by a fiesta. The annual Christmas celebration of the miners is in honor of the Virgin of Andacoya, whose image, tradition says, was found near a rich silver vein not far off. perched on stilts so as to be seen and heard by all, declaims his tragic verses of love and the desert and the life of the solitary miner. A 
the ways of the old prospectors are gradually disappearing. Today, large-scale operation and modern machinery have made Chile the second copper mining country of the world. At Chuquicamata, an open pit mine 9,000 feet above the sea is the largest single deposit of copper ore ever discovered. For years, the North American owners have sent here their best Chilean and American technicians to pour tons of dynamite into the drill hole and blast out copper valued at $500 million in 20 years. Pedro Valdivia and the early Spaniards never dreamed of such wealth, millions of tons of it under their feet. They were searching for only the pure, or relatively pure, gold and silver and copper. For this is low-grade copper ore, and only with large-scale refining equipment and foreign capital invested in $100 million lots can it be made a paying proposition. For you need giant shovels, electric railroads, and miles of track. You need half mile long conveyor belts, which carry the ore to great tanks called leaching vats, where dilute sulfuric acid treats 10,000 tons of ore at one time. Through a labyrinth of pipes, the copper is pulled off in solution and changed into solid copper sheets in one of the great electrolytic plants of the world. Melted down, these plates become the purest red metal, purer than anything the early explorers ever saw. A good share of all profits from Chuki Kamada and other copper mines owned by North American corporations goes to the Chilean government and helps considerably in balancing the national budget. Besides copper, Chile has iron ore. The Iron Mountain at El Tofo in the southern desert contains the only large deposits in all of South America except those in Brazil. Most of the ore is shipped north to the United States, but some is smelted into pig iron in central Chile. The government has ambitious plans for building up an iron and steel industry. Far more important to Chile than iron ore is nitrate, saltpeter, or nitrate of soda. Here in the sterile desert is the world's greatest natural source of fertilizer, explosives, and iodine. Scientists disagree over how the nitrate beds were formed, but we know they remain today because in the dry desert there was no water to wash them away. From 1860 to 1917, Chile's economic prosperity could almost be measured by the world nitrate markets. During many years, 80% of all her exports was one product, nitrate of soda. Once mined and washed by hand, today the nitrate, under the new Guggenheim process, is treated as rapidly and efficiently as copper. The pinkish raw ore, called caliche, is put into solution in a leaching vat. One byproduct is iodine almost a world monopoly of Chile. Then comes heat treatment, and finally in a barn-like cooling plant, the molten white liquid is shot skyward. When it hits the floor, it is crystallized into countless tiny white pellets like BB shot. The refined nitrate, two million tons or more each year, is shipped in bulk to the Pacific, 100 miles away. is packed in 100-pound sacks to be used as fertilizer by many a farmer in the United States 
and by progressive farmers in Chile itself. Isolated in the desert, each great nitrate camp has learned to take care of its own needs, even to foundries and machine shops and repairing locomotives. The sons of illiterate miners are now expert electricians and mechanics because of their training here. Here we begin to see what the mineral resources of the desert mean to Chile. They mean more than just the availability of nitrate to be used as fertilizer in this splendid nitrate park just outside of Alparaiso. More than Viña del Mar, Chile's Palm Beach with its casino, its world-famed O'Higgins Hotel, and wide sandy beaches. More than the beautiful Santiago racetrack, where thoroughbreds attract large and responsive crowds. More than all this, the wealth of the desert means schools, modern, well-built schools, swimming pools, and fine playgrounds. Hospitals with modern equipment and well-trained staffs. Universities with able faculties and extensive public housing development and government buildings. Santiago has become a world cultural center. Today, one of the most advanced countries of the Western Hemisphere, Chile has even greater plans for social and industrial progress. And the mineral resources of the desert will help to make this possible. 